I do like a nice coffee, a real coffee. I drink a lot of instant coffee throughout the day, but I do, it's a special treat, I think, for me to have a, a real coffee from time to time. And uh, so I thought I'd make one for this video. This is the third of my living alone videos. My children have been away for a, well, let me rephrase that. My last child has been away now for a month in his own house. And so I've been here on my own for a month. Billy's um, rubbish is still in the top room, which I've now turned into my studio. And if you've been watching my regular videos, you would have realized I've been painting and sorting things out um, and moved my studio. This is my old studio space. And today it's a bank holiday as I record this. And you know what I do. Normally I'm out and about filming um, videos in the landscape and heritage and nature. But I don't go out on a bank holiday because bank holidays, the world and his brother comes out. It's busy, the roads are busy, places to park are full up and, and all of that. So I prefer to stay in on a bank holiday. Cheers, by the way. And I've got stuff to do in the house, which I need to do. And I thought whilst I was uh, preparing to get on with that, I would bring you up to date with what it's like living in what was once, for 30 years pretty much, a very busy household. And now, for the last month, has been a very quiet household. And what the advantage are, advantages are and what the differences are. But I think I might just have my, my coffee first. Excuse me. I went to see my son yesterday, actually. Um, <clears throat> in fact, uh, both him and his girlfriend. And it was interesting because I was asking just to see how they were doing. Um, and I was sort of saying, have you got, have you moved in? Do you feel at home? All that sort of thing. And they said, yes, of course, and all of that. And I, I, they said, do, do you notice the difference, Dad? And I said, well, I do notice the difference. Obviously, the house is a lot quieter uh, now that you're not there. I said, but the things that I notice is the amount of waste that <laughs> has diminished. Um, so in the past, I mean, there were three of us. So there was Billy and his girlfriend and myself. And th the fact that now Billy and his girlfriend have gone... Um, meant that my fridge was suddenly depopulated of food. And I realised actually how much they were putting in the fridge. Uh, I had two shelves and they, I think, had two shelves, but they also had the little plastic boxes at the bottom. And then the freezer was pretty much theirs. So I barely have anything in the freezer now. Uh, so my fridge is, is quite depopulated. Um, the other thing that I noticed was the bin men came and there'd been a bit of rubbish that I'd gathered and I still need to go to the dump to get rid of a lot of uh, stuff that Billy has left that doesn't need and can't get shot of. Um, but, and so I can't put those in a dustbin. But then the bin men came recently and I thought, well, there was barely anything in the bins. And I was looking around going, wait a minute, my domestic rubbish is actually incredibly incredibly diminished and I started to reason it's it's sort of like one person doesn't use very much two people together seem to use more combined than two individual people I couldn't quite work that out but I suppose if there's two of you in the house you're more inclined to do things together and buy more things egged on by each other than perhaps one person or two individual separate people would do because you might just be, you know, eking out an existence on your own. So yeah, domestic waste, food, um, the real crux is gonna be 
Is my electricity bill going to be cheaper? <laughs> and water. So, here then is the studio, the new studio, which uh, this is uh, Monday as I say, so tonight on a Monday I would do the Vogue show at 8 o'clock till 9.30, an hour and a half, and the lovely Julia's coming in. So I've got the equipment in here, um, on the other side of the room there's still a load of junk which um, I'm thinking I may have to take downstairs and shove in the old studio but the old studio some of the stuff I need to infill on the walls behind me here just to make them a bit more interesting um, because it's uh, a bit bland at the moment um, so that's one of the tasks is to tidy up the room downstairs and then sort out this but there's a lot more space here which is uh, you know, very handy for me because the other room was really cramped, especially when people came in. And also, um, one can make this a little bit easier if one's going to have other people in and have a, a, maybe a sofa on the other side um, and cameras facing that way. So I've got lots of plans for the potential, but it's still very much early days. Uh, but, you know, we are... We are progressing, and this is, I suppose, one of the things about living on one's own in the old house. And as you can see, my house is very tired and needs a lot of work, and I, I'm going to be sprucing it up uh, over the next 12 months or so. And it, uh, it, it means that I can do projects, and I'm sure a lot of single blokes, possibly single women, I don't know, um, sort of sp spill their projects round their house. It's a very different type of house. To me, this is a workhouse. Uh, not in the old-fashioned sense of workhouse, but it is a workhouse, a working house. It's my office, and I want to utilise this space as much as I can uh, for the moment. One of my passions, and anybody who obviously knows me, is reading, and of course you only have to look in my front room, that I have lots and lots of books. I don't know what it is about books. I, I'm not so keen on the electronic books. Um, I like the real solid, absolute physical presence of them. I like the smell of them. I like the text, the printed. When I left school, I went into printing, actually. It just suddenly occurred to me. And print and ink and paper for the first two and a half years of my working life, from 15 to 17 and a half, I suppose, um, I was dealing with that. It wasn't printing books. It was stationary, but it was... Um, I cleaned the print machine, um, and I inked the print machine, I printed stuff, I cut the paper, I made the plates and the whole, the whole reprographic stuff. So there's something visceral about books for me that really speaks to me and I like to be surrounded with books. One of the things about living on one's own now is that I love to pick up books, any book. I mean, I have a number of books on the go, but sometimes I'm waiting for something. Maybe somebody's coming to see me or I'm waiting for a render to finish on the computer whilst I'm making my videos. And I'll pick up something, you know, like a little simple textbook like this, the Collins Pocket Guide to British Birds. And I may just read a paragraph or just look at the pictures. Um, I like randomly going into a book on the shelf and just picking up, you know, read the first paragraph or two of a chapter, particularly the textbooks. Most of mine are sort of history books and textbooks. So I'll pick up something. So here we are, look, oh, at random, a book I've recently acquired, which is about the English counties. And I just love, re I just love picking up books and reading random stuff. It, to me, it's great. And of course, 
I seem to have more time living alone and not constantly thinking about others, making other people cups of tea and uh, cooking for others. Um, I keep myself active, so I don't have a lot of time, but I'm trying now more and more and more to make time to read and get through the books. I must stop myself from buying books or accepting books, but I can't. It's my one vice. I just love them. Don't know what it is. I just wish I could retain the knowledge. Right, I've got to clean the SE, get that ready. I tend to, um, sometimes I clean it just before I light it. The SE is my wood burning stove, by the way. Um, and sometimes I do that before I light it. It's, it's still in the morning today, so I'm not gonna light it yet. But sometimes it's just nice to get it all cleaned up after the day if it's cooled down. Generally, I let it burn out by about, uh, well, by nine-ish it sort of generates enough hot water. That's the other thing. Um, now, thanks to my lovely Essie, whereas before when Billy and Sharifa were here, um, there's three of us wanting baths and hot water and things. So with three people wanting a bath, uh, the Essie would probably replenish the hot water once, depending on when you've let, lit it. And I tend to light the Essie around about, well, four, five, six, depending on the weather. Um, and it, it's usually only going for about five hours, probably max. So it heats up enough hot water uh, for initial washing up, for a bath. And then if I have a bath uh, myself at about eight o'clock-ish, something like that, or just after the show, before I go to bed, stick a couple of extra locks on, uh, logs on and it will replenish the hot water for the next day's washing up and whatever you need hot water for in the day which is fantastic. When Billy and Sharifa were here, of course, there's more of you. So they were relying on the immersion heater to heat up the water a hell of a lot because the Essie wasn't always on in the morning if they wanted a bath in the morning um, or late at night if one of them had a bath or if I wanted the bath later on, the water had all been used. So uh, that's where my electricity saving is gonna be great. So I'm really thrilled with that, really thrilled. But I've gotta go and clean that out. So that's kind of it really uh, on this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll report back what it's like living alone, uh, the various bits and pieces that I'm aiming to do in the house, the improvements. Um, I wanna sort of get some of the rooms looking a bit nicer. As you've seen, the house is quite tired. It's homely, it's well loved and it's, it's used, but this will be the time to make the, the changes because there's no one here and I can get on with it in between making my videos. So nothing will be fast, but um, it's a slow process. I don't have to rush. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this, do let me know in the comments, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. And of course, become a patron, support what I do so that I can keep making the videos and go out, put diesel in the car, pet in the van, and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye, bye. Right, let's pack stuff away.